Hey everybody, it's your boy Serge Dragon. Welcome back to another edition of the Heaven Monsters Podcast. I'm your boy Serge Dragon, and this is with all that again. With me always is Terrence, aka T Money. If you smell what the lion is cooking, I'm hyped. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. Today we're gonna cover 205 Live and the premiere on USA Channel NXT, as well as the second half that Continued on on WWE Network, so that was weird. It said two hour, but I didn't think they were gonna put that. <laughs> They're trying to get everybody in the WWE Network that way. <laughs> I see what you're doing, WWE. This is a review for that on September 17th and 18th. So let's go. On 205 Live, we start off the show with Lince Dorado taking on Arya Davari with their feud, mainly with Arya Davari trying to trick. Lindsay Dorado from branching away from the Lucha House Party to fighting the being a solo superstar, saying that he's he could have taken him to the top. Eh, no, you couldn't because Lindsay Dorado defeated him in style. Yep, and Lucha House Party stands united, tall once again. Next, we would have. Gentleman Jack Gallagher taking on the Brian Kendrick. Courtesy of a disqualification on the part of the Brian Kendrick using a kendo stick, Jack Gallagher won by disqualification. And because of the fact that Brian Kendrick attacked Jack Gallagher multiple times, Akira Tozawa, his dear friend at the time, tried to stop him from using the kendo stick, even going so far as to take the kendo stick, throw it out of his hands outside the ring. From there, the Brian Kendrick plays the heel once again, bringing back the candlestick after leaving the ring to only assault Akira Tozawa with the candlestick. Every, uh, Akira Tozawa is left confused as to why his friend would then do that. Next, we would have Tony Nese and Oni Lurkin fighting off in a one-on-one -on -one match where Oni Lorcan says on a promo saying that he is going to beat Tony Nese and then go moving on to the person he has beef with, and that's Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak, I said Drew. Sadly, Tony Nese defeats him and then comes out Drew Gulak to just put salt on the room. That sucks, man. While he looks up uh, NXT... On the 18th of September, this will be a shout out to our boys, the Heaven Monsters podcast. The remaining members is Xavier Hill, Mike Henry, and Andre Mitchell. A link to their YouTube pages will be in the descriptions down below, as always. And a remaining shout out to Renee, Farrell, Chris Petrie, and Delvin. We'll be right back. And we're back. This will be... Both parts of NXT on the 18th premiering on USA and continuously on the second half on WWE Network. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We start off the show on premiering on USA Channel. I'm about to say WWE Channel. <laughs> In which case, Triple H shows himself and starts the show right with the fatal four-way number one contendership for Shayna Baszler's NXT Women's Title. It would be consisted of Io Shirai, Maya, Maya Yim, and Bianca Belair, and Candice LeRae. And man, that was awesome. That literally started right from beginning to end. That match was badass. These women did not disappoint. They they even did a Tower of Pet and Doom. <laughs> they did the Tower of Doom, four women. Yeah! Bang! Who got the worst out of it? Not Candice LeRae, because she was on the bottom, pushing them all down. Ultimately, with everybody hitting their signatures over and over and over and over, it would be none other than Candice LeRae, who puts Maya M in a reverse Hurricane Rada, and then a Chris Jericho, Lion Saw, Moon Saw, off the second rope, Right on to her to get the pin and become number one contender. Her 
Celebration is spoiled thanks to the arrival of the horsewomen. And Shayna Baszler showed in the title with her friends behind her back. And Shayna, uh, not Shayna, uh, Candice LeRae, about to say Shalanda. <laughs> Candice LeRae does not back down. It's going to be an interesting match. Next, we have Cameron Grimes. Cameron. Yeah, Cameron. That's what I said. You said Cameron. Did I? Yeah. Sorry. Cameron Grimes versus Sheen. Sean. Oh, Sean. Maluta. Maluta. This guy looked like he was ready to go. He was ready to go, all right, but Cameron Grimes hits him with a jumping <laughs> double stomp. <laughs> Too damn fast. That match had it in like six seconds. First bell. Bing. One, two, three. Stomp. And it, one, two, three. Damn. That was too damn fast. Damn. Cameron Grimes has got it going. They, Triple H was right. Don't blink. Because that match was crazy. Next, we would have the match that would end the night. None other than Roderick Strong going up against the North American champion, Velveteen Dream, in a match that would and in distastefulness. But nonetheless, the prophecy, the prediction by Adam Cole would finally be presented. With the interference of all three other members of the Undisputed Era, of Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, and Adam Cole interfering, distracting the referee, and taking advantage of a referee that got knocked by Velveteen Dream by accident, they would actually deal a fatal blow that Roderick Strong takes advantage and wrecks his, the Velveteen's back. Oh, ultimately dethroning him and obtaining the final piece of gold, the North American title, the NXT heavyweight title, and the NXT tag team gold, all gold for the male division, is now around the waist of the Undisputed Era. And they end that show on that note. So now the question is, who is going to take all that gold? Which four individuals will shut the Undisputed Era down? Because they need to be taken down now that they actually got all the hype. They got all the smoke, as the Street Prophet says. Any thoughts on that? Because that was the end of the first hour that premiered on USA Channel. Your thoughts? No, I'm good. You're good? You could have watched it. He didn't want to watch it. I'm not a big fan of NXT. And you want to see? I you don't, be not really. You want to be? I don't. I'm not really. You want to be? I'm just waiting for AEW. <laughs> AEW, and that was funny. They aired the freaking commercial yeah. for AEW yeah. for T TNT on October second. Son of a bitch! Woo! This is gonna be good. They're actually promoting their rivals. Chris Jericho and plus they're soon they, to be rivals. And plus, they create another title. Mm-hmm. The AEW television title. And there's more, there's more titles coming soon. Yeah, buddy. We then begin with this second half hour on WWE Network. Starting the show with Pete Dudd and, uh, this guy's name I don't know. Go ahead. Otaro, Otaro Ruiz. Otaro Ruiz. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. Pete Dudd makes Pretty much good work on him. He actually put up a good fight, but when he starts putting that arm bar and breaks the fingers like this, excuse me, I'm gonna just act like I'm breaking it. He does this, like that. He just pulls that finger and he starts doing this. And he really yanks those fingers and he tap out and he wins. That's how he stayed champion for over 600 days, breaking Brock Lesnar's uh, universal title uh, <laughs> holding. <laughs> you know, my other stuff, he don't even care for it. You know, he just did it. He just went for no reason. Mm -hmm. Next, we have a match between one of the one half of the NXT two D, uh, I guess you want to call them divas, but they're women. They know the like They act like divas. They act like they have higher uh, core. They're more etiquette. They're more this. They're saying they're the hires, but the win loss ratio doesn't exactly scream they're winners. 
They keep losing matches a lot of the times, even when they try to cheat. In case in point, the Chinese sensation women division, uh, Xia Li. Yeah. Zhang Li is what Zhang Li. Ends up beating one of these women, Ali, Aliyah, yeah, yeah. in style. Next, we would have a match that was supposed to be uh, Koshia versus somebody else. Denzel. Dijuane. Dij, Dijuane. Against Koshida, but... A surprise, surprise, a lot of people found out that none other than the UK of NXT. You, yeah, they come in. We got the four members, the three members, for, uh, first and foremost, three members of the Imperium showing up on NXT on the WWE Network attacking this poor guy. And then comes Walter, the current NXT UK champion, by the way, for those who don't know, the uh, in WWE, that is the official European title. Because since the UK is in Europe, you get the point. What? Yeah, it is. So basically, uh, duh, is smarts. You can't have a UK title and a European title. Uh, uh, they're, they're the same thing. Technically, you can, though. And since they're on television now, a lot of people are say, uh, thinking that they should rename the NXT UK title into either just the UK or European title. Like There's that. already people saying that. Yeah, that's just a rip off of the, of the original uh, the European Championship. Cause it's like, I thought it was the uh, WCW. No. Uh, There's their head TV title. Well, Walter is issuing that just like on NXT UK branch. He is issuing that fact on the standard American NXT. Damn, there's too many times I'm saying NXT. Fuck. <laughs> it's saying that the that the ring is sacred. And that anyone who defiles it will be punished. Kushida from Japan then says that it's his time. And that he will take it. He takes care of one, two, three members of Imperium, but when he has to deal with Walter, the champion, he gets wrecked. And then all other three members get in and just jump him. And they just stand like this. They stand like this all together, all in a row, stating their, their claim. I'm like, son of a bitch. The UK invasion. See? All four of them together. Next, we would have a 205 Live match. So, I guess you are right that they're cha- planning on fusing the 205 Live in NXT. Yeah, they, they, can't can- they said they can't cancel because, like, mm-hmm. they're going to move the, to the cruiserweights to NXT. Mm-hmm. All the cruiserweights. And apparently, NXT UK is coming to NXT on USA, by the looks of it. Even though they didn't appear on USA, they did show up on the app. So... If both hours end up being on the USA channel, we'll be seeing more of them. Case in point, back to the 205 Live match on NXT, we would have Oni Lorkin, Oni Lorkin, I said Oni Lorkin, eh. Oni Lorkin in a number one contenders match for Drew Gulak's 205 Live uh, Cruiserweight title. I get that. 205, uh, look, I said it again, 205 Live title. <laughs> That's not a thing. The Cruiserweight title. With none other than the return of the man of the hour, Leo Rush. Woo! He came to collect. Because he ended up beating Holy Lorkin in that match. And now is the number one contender for Drew Gulak. For the record, Drew Gulak didn't show up. We'll be right back. Okay, we got to end this fast. His right's here. Uh, What the heck? Let me do this. Yep. Okay, Okay, we're good. I got this. 
The next match would be a one-on-one -on -one competition between the original bro, Matt Riddles, versus the Bell from Belfast, the Beast from Belfast, or something like that, uh, Killian Dane. You can go. Uh, uh, this will be the end of his part because he's got to go catch his ride. I'm going to still be here. Peace. Later, uh, later, bro. Later. See you Monday. Later. With that said, okay, I will. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> pause that, bro. Yeah. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, oh, did you have anything to uh, comment? Because the match ended in chaos because there is no declared winner on account of the fact that their their match would be ultimately. Ending outside the ring in the backyard where everybody, including starting with Walter, who attacked and the Imperium attacked the original bro, Matt Riddles, and then Street Profits get in and the uh, Forgotten Sons, it just uh, straight up chaos. I'm good. You good? Okay, bro. Oh my god, that was chaos. Oh man. Holy shit. Damn. That match ended in complete chaos. Everybody started in a brawl. It, and it st uh, that brawl started in the back where everybody was just fighting everybody. Just 205 Live, NXT, people from N uh, NXT UK. You got everybody wanting to prove something that uh, and it's been raving on Twitter. Two, uh, NXT has been burning up Twitter like crazy. I, I didn't believe it until I actually went home. Yeah, yeah, I went home because it was on a Wednesday and I was actually watching this and then looking on Twitter to see if that was true. And I've been, damn, damn, damn. Just, 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 just straight up, damn, damn, damn. This is my other phone. I don't got Twitter on there. I got Twitter on this phone. And it was just blasting. Everybody was saying, oh, Twitter, uh, NXT, NXT, NXT was the hottest thing. And then I hear the next day that NXT's rating went skyrocket. I was like, heck yeah. So that said, everybody was put on notice. And then I guess that kind of worked that everybody was tuning in to the second and a half hour of NXT. And then, of course, on YouTube and Tumblr, not Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, everybody was seeing the news on what was going on two hours, three hours before the show on USA premiering. Everybody getting their uh, talk on it. And as well as the fact of what came after. We have the Undisputed Era talking, uh, celebrating. And then we got the uh, Imperium. And then uh, we get scenes of uh, Imperium attacking. And we got scenes of the chaos that would rule after, including... Sh uh, the scenes of Oni Lorcan and Leo Rush and their match and how their high flying and striking was going. It, it was all over everywhere. NXT blew up social media, ladies and gentlemen. I was on everything and seeing it, my phone was literally blown up seeing nothing but NXT. I am so happy and I'm so thrilled to know that it had such a Impact on everyone. Damn. And this was just the first night. Ladies and gentlemen. Fun fact. When it did premiere an hour long during that Christmas special, if I'm correct. Tribute of the Troops. They did that. They had one hour show. For NXT, I put on duplicates on my Xfinity cable box, and it already had it ready to record. <laughs> I was happy I had it ready. I made sure before going to work, because I was like, oh, let me see. Well, actually, it was the night before, and I was like, <laughs> love it. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, uh, final thoughts. Got to do final thoughts. I thought this was going to end the feud between Matt Riddle and Killian Dane, but boy, was I wrong. And there is heated tension going on in the back between all three shows. 
NXT, NXT UK, 205 Live, that now, and then we got freaking SmackDown moving to Fox Sports in the draft coming as well to determine who is going to wear and be there, no wild card, except, yeah, yes, I'm collecting items, except for one title, two to be precise, the women's tag team titles. It was said that those titles, were actually, the 24-7 title. Those two titles, I believe, may not have the wild card effect, but because of the fact that the title does have a prestige, those two titles have the prestige as they're going for, they're either going to be dropped or they're going to still have the wild card effect. Well, there will be matches where Raw will have their chance at those titles for the women's tag team titles. The SmackDown will have their chance. The NXT will have their chance. Possibly even the NXT UK will have their chance. So we'll have to wait and see on that. As for the 24-7 title, I can't really say, because how is this going to work? I think that the those titles will give reign for them to go anywhere they want as long as they have those titles. If they lose those titles, they'll have to go to their respectable brands they were drafted to and stay there unless they can win their title backs. In which case... Also is the fact that the title rematches clauses is still saying that there is, you have to earn it. There will be no rematch clauses for losing your title. Will that stay in effect with this draft happening? Hmm. A lot of changes are coming, ladies and gentlemen, and this is only the beginning. So that is my final thoughts. I figured I strategize that in advance and make my predictions and curiously ask those questions. To anyone who would wonder about this in in the same manner as I am or is just realizing that after I said it, leave your comments down below on what you think. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be the end of this podcast. You like this video, give it a thumbs up. You didn't, give it a thumbs down. Hit that subscribe button right there if you like the content and hit that notification bell. For the next Heaven Monsters podcast. I'm Serge Dragon. And I say. See you next time. Peace out.